China's tech industry has been hit by sweeping regulatory crackdowns since the second half of 2020. There was no shortage of headlines over the past 12 months, including the abrupt suspension of Ant Group's IPO, the record 2.8 billion US dollar antitrust fine on Alibaba, China's ban on Bitcoin mining, and the cybersecurity probe into Didi Tuxing shortly after its US IPO. By the end of July, the share prices of China's largest internet companies had dropped 30 to 50 percent from their peaks. The regulatory tightening is driven by Beijing's desire to better align the country's technology development with national strategic goals and public interests. The increased regulation has four main areas of focus, antitrust, fintech, data protection, and cryptocurrencies. But why? Let's go through these one by one. First, antitrust. China's internet industry is dominated by several tech giants. In some sectors, the market concentration is even higher than that in the United States. For instance, the top three players in China's e-commerce sector command 84% of the market, compared to 51% in the US. In food delivery, 98% of the market belongs to the two largest players. Ride-hailing is also dominated by two players, with a combined 92% market share, where Didi Tuxing claims the vast majority. Big Tech's significant market power has led to monopolistic behaviors, like heavily walled gardens. Taobao is an e-commerce platform owned by Alibaba. WeChat is a messaging app owned by Alibaba's competitor, Tencent. Users are not allowed to share links from Taobao on WeChat. Imagine not being able to share a product link from Amazon on WhatsApp. Conversely, Alibaba often forces merchants to list products exclusively on their platforms in a practice known as picking one from two, threatening complete removal if merchants were to sell across multiple channels. What regulators are trying to do is to stamp out these monopolistic behaviors. Second, fintech. Fintech companies like Ant Group have been using big data and algorithms to facilitate borrowing by consumers and small businesses, but they contribute only a tiny fraction of the borrowed amounts, while most of the funding comes from banks. Such lending facilitated by fintech companies ballooned to over 500 billion US dollars in just five years. The government considers fintech to be fueling excessive borrowing and overspending while bearing little of the liabilities. Therefore, it is now working to bring fintech under the same regulations as banks. Third, data protection. China previously lagged the EU and the US on data protection laws. Yet, public concern on rising privacy violations and the authorities' growing unease about the data practices of tech firms have accelerated legislation. Following the 2017 cybersecurity law, China passed a data security law in June of 2021. The personal information protection law is also expected to be finalized in this same year. China's legal regime on data protection is closely modeled after the GDPR, although it provides stronger protection of individual rights against corporations over state organs. Lastly, cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin mining consumes a significant amount of electricity, and China used to be the largest country in terms of Bitcoin's mined and hash rate. At its peak in 2019, it was responsible for 76% of all the mining activities in the world. That share has since declined, but if we treat all of the Bitcoin activities in China as a city, Bitcoin would still be the ninth most polluting city in China in terms of carbon emissions before the crackdown. The environmental impact of crypto activities runs afoul of China's goal of achieving carbon neutrality by 2060. Separately, China is also keenly concerned about financial security and graft, as crypto has the potential of circumnavigating the country's strict capital controls.